I've had this sculpt from S10, 10 watt uh, laser cutter for almost a year and it's been running really great. I've been having some great projects. I actually used it to start my own company that uh, now specializes in making uh, laser cut um, lamps. And it's been had some heavy use over the past year. I've been having uh, multiple 18 hour production days where it's just been running 18 hours straight. Uh, no breaks in between and then for several weeks in a row but uh, it's starting to show some wear the only maintenance i've done basically on it for the past year has been um, cleaning the laser lens now i see two symptoms that's there are two things that's starting to fail which makes my cuts uh, lesser quality but also it, it, it makes my cuts fail more often uh, and it's, it's two things it's one thing is is um, the laser module the connector that connects to the laser module it's a little bit loose it's had too much play so it started to deteriorate the pcb a little bit which actually means that for some areas of the laser bed now it, it goes into some sort of uh, specific angle with this connector that i do not have power so for some areas of my laser bed i cannot cut the pcb is of course of unfortunately damaged a little bit too much for me to be able to fix it the second issue is with the um, air assist pump so i've had this uh, the sculpt for an air assist pump on this one since the beginning however it started to fail i feel a lot less pressure coming out of the uh, nozzle of the laser head now compared to when it was new this is uh, a living hinge that i've cut as so part of one of my lamp designs and you can see a few things here so up close and um, if i can get it to focus you see that it starts to um, at every start of every cut it's, it's it gets these um, sort of burn marks. It didn't do that in the beginning. So, so this is how I can see the quality overall of the parts that I'm creating is deteriorating because I now get burn marks here. Another issue you can see is here. Um, so it's it's in these in this one and in this cut, it didn't cut all the way through. And uh, for for plywood especially, there there can be a little bit difference in the thickness of the glue between the layers. So you can see here that. It's much more, much darker here, or, cut, uh, or much both wider and darker, but also you see on the, on the back side, it didn't actually cut through. So this is some of the symptoms that you see on a, on a laser module that's uh, losing a bit of power, but also the, that the air assist is not working. So that's why I figured it was a good idea and a good time to upgrade. So I have this, which is a 22 watt uh, laser upgrade module for the scoff on um, s9 i have an s10 i believe it fits uh, but we might need to do some small modifications it also comes with a new motherboard so it comes with the with the upgraded um, electronics and a new um, new power supply to handle the, the, la the larger laser module it also comes with um, with an air assist pump before i, I made my own wiring so i could control it through light brain so to turn on and off the and the air assist. Now with this one, it should be included in the control board. So just to give you a size comparison, this over here is the 10 watt module, and this over here is the 22 watt module. And as you can see, there's both quite a, a difference in the width of these, but also especially this this difference here. From this side, it, it, the 10 watt module looks super small compared to the 22 watt module. Now the difference here is there's four holes on this one and there's two holes on the uh, 10 watt module. I have the plate here, which is the plate that's used to mount the laser module for the 10 watt system onto the uh, sculpt font frame. If I now try to put this here, you can pretty easily see that these four bolt holes does not line up with these two channels. Now, I believe I have two options. One option is to make a new frame, find a piece of aluminum or alloy or steel or some kind of metal, and then make a template where these holes are the same mounting holes as, as now but this part is basically wider, so it fits into this channel um, and it has channels here and here for adjusting up and down and then replacing that part with this part. Another option is to use still this one and then drill new four holes here 
and tap them with the same thread as here so that these four holes now fit the channel. Okay, scratch that. New plan. Before I mentioned we had two options. Either we modify or we create a new one of these so that it fits the 22 watt laser module adapter or we take this part that already bolts to the 22 watt laser and uh, drill new holes and tap so that it fits this one. Both of these options are a bit risky, especially with the tolerances that we have. So, uh, and we have an option number three. This part, it's difficult to make in a different material than metal because it needs to actually contain quite a lot of weight and it's shifting around when the x-axis and the y-axis move together. Now, this part, this part is already quite thick um, and the thickness of this part can change we can we can make this a little bit thicker even and this part is always bolted down to the 22 watt laser module so basically what i want to do is i actually want to 3d print an adapter for this because it's always tightened down it's always secured so the 3d print is not sort of like this where the weight sort of is attached or it's bolted here but the weight is attached out here a 3d print is a, is a bit risky for this one. So, the new plan is to create a 3D print one of those, one of a new one of these, where these edges are not as wide as they are here, but they're basically moved into around here and here, so that it fits with the, with the width of this, so that it, this one can then go up and down here in guided channels. These holes, the big holes, the countersunk holes, will stay the same, they'll stay the same place, they will stay the same dimensions. However, these smaller holes that's tapped here, they will um, be moved so it matches with these channels, of course, but also, since I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker, there's now room for threaded inserts. So, the finger screws that holds the uh, laser module to this adapter plate is M4 thread. So basically, I want to take some M4 threaded insert and I'm gonna uh, melt into the plastic. So that's the game plan. We're gonna thread, 3D print or design one of these with threaded inserts so it matches this part. I'm gonna hop onto Fusion 360 now, design this part, and I'll see you when this one has printed. So I'm back, it's a new day, new shirt. Um, yesterday you saw me design uh, a bracket. This is the bracket that I pulled off the 3D printer just now. So you basically see the same pattern um, with, with these four countersunk holes that bolts this plate to the Sculpton laser module, the laser head. But these smaller holes have basically been moved inwards and made larger so it is uh, it allows for uh, threaded inserts like this to be melted into these holes and then we have a metal uh, thread so that we can continuously adjust the focus height of this one without ruining the plastic piece. That's at least the aim, let's see if it works. So let's try to install this on the machine and then see if, if everything like this lines up.
everything on the laser cutter connected properly, I hope. I think I'm just gonna try to turn it on and then see what happens. Okay, I'll just see if I can actually move. So here you see it move the right way, also this way, that way. Okay, great. So, so far it's been plug and play. I haven't touched any of the settings and I went to the right corner um, to, to do the homing sequence. Work. So everything seems to be actually set up here. This blue dot right here is the laser. I'm gonna uh, try to just clean everything up, root the, uh, the air pump to the correct location, put the tent back on, um, and then we can start to do a test cut. Okay, so I just did the first few test cuts on um, on three millimeter plywood, um, just to see because that that's sort of what I typically cut, or at least that thickness of wood is uh, what I typically cut three and four millimeter plywood, uh, but different different types of plywood. Um, so I wanted to see how it compared to the ten watt laser module, and uh, it took me a few tries to get it right. Uh, here you have um, my first attempt, my second attempt, and my third attempt. Uh, the, f the first attempt here, it went from two millimeters per second to 20. And I realized quite quickly that there might be more nuance, more detail in this area right here that I have missed. So I instead for the, the second and third one, I did from one millimeters per second to 10 millimeters per second. Um, and as you can see here, it's uh, it varies a little bit. The focus was a little bit hard to get right. The 10 watt module only had two finger screws and that was quite easy to just reach around and get that and get, get it to the right position. But this module is quite large and you have four, four uh, finger screws on the back. So it actually, it can be a little bit fiddly to get the right focus. Also, I had to level the, um, the honeycomb to the laser module because otherwise it, it, for some parts of this, it would be more in focus, and then I at least saw that the more you went up, and the more out of focus it got. And I can actually show you. So you could basically see that that this here is in focus, and maybe this here, but you can see that the engraving for the power and for the the passes and the intervals up here, it didn't really burn, and and it, the power is strong enough, but uh, it sort of seemed like the focus was not quite right. But basically, what I what I want to show here is. It goes from one millimeters per second up to 10. Uh, and from here, it goes from 10% power to 100% power. And basically you can cut through uh, three millimeter plywood up to around eight uh, millimeters per second. You can actually nine, and you can see on the back side here, this one, it is almost cut through. It's just a corner that's hanging. So if you if you push this out, it's, it's not really connected. I will probably stay around maybe six, somewhere between six and seven millimeters per second, maybe 6.2, 6.3 millimeters per second for, for these cuts and around 90% power. I, I would just like to make sure that it actually cuts through rather than pushing that extra millimeters per second because it takes a lot longer time to get it out of, of, a, of, a, of the wood if it's not properly cut through all the places. Um, so I'd rather have that dialed in. So you can see that it goes 
with air assist and I had to poke these out. Uh, but with air assist, it goes to around five millimeters per second that you can cut through. Whereas with the 22 watt module, it goes up to maybe nine and two for a comparison. So almost twice as fast and maybe, maybe I still don't have the, um, the focus quite right, but uh, I'll stick around 6.2, 6.3 millimeters per second, around 90% power. And then I'll, uh, I'll make sure that my cuts look clean and goes through all the, all the time. Okay. So. I tested a few more uh, materials. I'm not going to go through a complete arsenal of materials like some of these um, uh, proper reviews of, of, uh, of the machine. I'm just going to test the materials that that I generally use for the projects that I have. Um, so 3mm MDF, it's sort of the same story as the 3mm um, plywood. It also cuts maximum at 8mm uh, per second. You could maybe get lucky to get nine millimeters per second if you have the right focal length, but you sort of have to pop these out in this corner. And then I tested some four millimeter plywood, so a thicker plywood than before. So four millimeter plywood. Um, and here you have 100% power and it cuts through at around six um, millimeters per second for four millimeter plywood. Uh, I would again just say maybe a little bit lower, maybe around four or five uh, millimeters per second and around 90% power just for the longevity of your laser module. I also did some uh, four millimeter oak. So here you also see it's the same story basically that you could maybe cut uh, six millimeters per second through here, um, but typically stay a little bit lower. If you look at the back side, you could maybe pop some of these out, but it's sort of on the edge. So I've kept them in just to show. So all in all, I'm, I'm really pleased with uh, with the result of the 22 watt module. It, it took a bit of work to get it to fit to a Scott One S10, but it is possible. I'm gonna uh, leave a link or I'm gonna upload um, the uh, adapter plate that I 3D printed uh, on Thingiverse, and I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can go check it out, download it if you want um, to upgrade your your module like that. Um, one thing that you have to be aware of is the limit switches. They don't necessarily fit on this machine. You can get them to fit, but you sort of have to angle them and position them in a way that it's not really meant to do, uh, but it works, so so that's fine. Uh, just something to be aware of. Otherwise, it's it's really cool to having a, a stronger laser module on here. It's great to again have a, an air assist that works. That's all for this video. Um, I hope you liked it, and uh, I'm trying to restart this channel, and this is the first video here um, but you'll basically see me doing a lot of projects uh, in the future with uh, both the laser cutter also a 3d printer and maybe some robotic projects uh, maybe maybe something else uh, but basically i'm gonna try to turn this into sort of a maker channel with uh, with a little workshop i have going on here so uh, please hit the subscribe button like the video if you if you liked it um, and also please tell me in the comments if this is helpful for you i don't know if if anyone else uh, is trying to upgrade their uh, Scott Von S10 to a larger module because it, it's not really available as a kit yet. Um, so please tell me if this was helpful and if you'd like to see uh, uh, what kind of projects that you can do on, on this uh, laser cutter. So uh, thank you for watching if you have and if you got this far in the video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. So thank you. Bye.